All righty, well welcome in to New Vision Family Fellowship. We want to we want to welcome each and every one today. I want to thank you for uh, the folks that are here for being here, and we want to thank you that are out there for being out there and listening and uh, tuning in. And uh, we are praying today that God will get ultimate glory from anything that is said and done. We just had a great time of worship here at uh, New Vision Family Fellowship, and uh, we want to invite you in. Uh, if you're if you're not here with us today, we want you to be here as soon as possible. Uh, we want you to grace us with your presence. So, uh, and we want you to know that uh, we not only pray for the folks that are here, we pray for the folks that are out there, and we want you to get a blessing today. We're going to uh, begin this morning in Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter 4, as I get all this extra stuff that is in my Bible tucked out of the way. Ephesians chapter 4 is where we're going to be. Let me turn there, and then we will go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask Him to be with us. Ephesians chapter 4. Awesome, awesome. All righty, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless the Word today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You, God, for all that You have done for us. Lord, we thank You for all that You are doing, and Lord, all You are going to do. We pray today, God, that You would bless Your Word, that it would leap off the page, Lord, and that we may be able to capture it and apply it to our hearts. We pray, God, that You would speak to us with one voice, Your voice, God, and that we would be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to speak to you today on this subject. On the subject of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Last week, I spoke to you and I told you what was going on in my own life, that I was walking out in my pasture, and to make a long story short, uh, you can go back and look at the YouTube video if you want to hear the whole story, but basically, at, as I was walking through the pasture, I began to replay in my mind all of the terrible things that I had done all through my life, all the mistakes that I had made, and... Um, Man, I'm telling you, it just came upon me like a wave. And folks, I was so depressed. Now, thanks be to the Lord that He gave me victory through it. That I understood that I needed to put the past at, as, as you know, past at last and get rid of it and, and, and go on for the gospel. We talked about the symbolism of being a runner and that we forget those things that are in the past, and that we press forward. Amen? And we're going to move on. We're going to move on not only individually with Christ, but we're going to move on as a church body. We are going to be out there. We are going to proclaim the Word of God and with, with, with all boldness. Amen? We're going to do that. What I want you to see and, and what came to me this week, I did a lot of driving. My average drive from one point to another this week was about six hours. I drove from Waco to Pecos, Texas. That's a long drive, y'all. And I had a lot of time to think. I had a lot of time to think. I had a lot of time to pray and mull over things. And, and what God spoke to me in my heart was this. Yes, the devil attacked you at that moment and brought up all those terrible things in your life. But what I wanted you to see through that, Charlie, was this, that I have forgiven you of all of it. Amen? 
Are there anybody here, is there anybody here that's been forgiven? I am forgiven. Right? <coughs> Look here in Ephesians. The first thing that we have to do, okay? And, and I was going to start out a different way, but let's go this way. The first thing that we have to do that is hard to do, okay? And we've got to remember this. Have you ever heard of forgive and forget? You ever heard that? Forgive and forget. Can I, let me ask you a question. And, and if your answer to this question is yes, you're a bigger person than I am. Okay? You've forgiven, right? We've all had to forgive somebody. But did you forget it? No. That is a misnomer. Okay? I don't know of anybody anybody that I can walk up to you, right? I can walk up to my sister right here and I could say, do you remember when Tony did such and such to you? And she'll say, well, yeah, I forgave him for that. But she still remembers it. So, folks, let me, let, me, let me hit you with this one. Forgive each other. I don't know how to forget it. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is about the human mind, but we can remember a lot more negative than we can positive. Amen? We, that's just, I, I don't understand it. That's just the way I'm wired. So I have to remember, I have to remember that I've got to forgive people. Right? Now what happens is this, that the devil continuously brings it up, right? Because he wants to cause a division in the body of Christ. Right? Divide and conquer. Amen? So what we have to do, okay, is you've got to do this. Oh, praise the Lord. God just brought this to me. You've got to use that unable to forget as a weapon to even forgive more. Now, do you understand where I'm going here? Right? All it is is this. <clears throat> the devil brings it up. Right? You've already forgiven this person. Right? The devil brings it up and says, Sister, you remember what Tony did? And you say, Well, yeah, sure I do. But I forgive him even more. Right? I forgive him even more. Folks, I have had Christians, and I'm going to blow your mind. Did you know that I've had more Christians do me dirty than unchristians? You understand that? I have had more people who name the name of Christ and say they are the body of Christ, do me dirty and hurt me and hurt my family than I have unchristians. You know that? Now, folks, that says something pretty negative about the body of Christ. You know that? I've said this, and this is my own cliche. You can write it down and put my name under it. The body, the, the army of the Lord, okay, the Christian army is the only army that shoots its wounded. You understand? that shoots its wounded. Right? Folks, we have got to forgive. We are called to. Look what the Word of God says here in Ephesians. Look at this. Look at this. Ephesians 4 and verse 32. <clears throat> Look at this. Be kind to one another. Right? Tender-hearted Forgiving each other just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Right? Who has give, forgiven more than anybody else? Jesus. Jesus. Let me tell you something. When Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, was hanging on the cross, 
Listen to this. Listen to this. And when I grasped this, when I really took hold of this, and I understood it in my, not just in my mind, but in my heart, it blew me away. Right? A lot of people will read the verse where Jesus is hanging on the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was not just for that moment, and I will argue with any theologian standing that that was not just for that moment. That was for then on, all the way to now. Tony, do you know that you don't know what you're doing? You know that? You don't know what you're doing. You, well, I'll ask his wife. He ain't got a clue, does he? Right? I've heard them, my wife will tell you. I'll make some snide remark to her, and she'll go, he don't know what he's doing. Right? He done messed up. It's peanut and butter, peanut butter and jelly for supper tonight, right? When it was going to be pot roast. But hear me, folk, listen. We don't know what we're doing. We have to have Christ guide us through forgiveness. You understand that? And we must, we are commanded by the Word of God to forgive one another. Right? <coughs> Listen. There is not a single person, there's not a single person, not a Christian alive who has not had their feelings hurt. Right? I, I, I'm sorry to tell you, if, if, if you think when you become a Christian that everything is going to be rosy-posy, sorry, it's not. Humans are still humans. As my daddy used to say, son, people are people and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Right? We can't change a thing. Darling, if you want to marry that young man thinking that if you marry him, you're going to change him, uh-uh. Right? My wife has had to forgive a whole lot of stuff. Right? For 30 years, she's been forgiven. Forgiving me. Right? And I've had to forgive her for one or two things. Right? <laughs> Lance is back there laughing. <clears throat> Hear me, folk. The first thing is this, if you're writing notes. We are commanded by God to forgive one another because He forgave us first. You understand? You know what blows my mind? And this is a little bit of a, what do they call it? A sidebar, a extra thing I'm going to throw at you. You know what blows my mind? That before I was born, before I was thought of, generations in the past, did you know that God already knew how sorry of a scoundrel I was going to be? And He hung on the cross 2,000 years ago and said, Father, forgive Charlie because he knows not what he does. Don't that give you... Just, that just excites me. Folk, I was forgiven 2,000 years ago. Right? When I, you said, no, wait, wait, whoa, 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 Charlie. You weren't forgiven until you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh-uh. No. I just came to a point where I choose to accept, cho chose I can't even talk this morning. Where I chose to accept that forgiveness. You follow what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? I chose. I made a choice at an altar, okay, to accept that forgiveness, that free gift, right? It was done for me 2,000 years ago, hanging on a tree. In the city, outside the city gates of Jerusalem, right? 
It was done then. But it took 2,000 years for me to accept it. Right? You must accept forgiveness. Now, hear me. If, if, if I do something wrong to my sister, right? And she says, Charlie, I forgive you. I've got to accept that forgiveness. Okay? That wasn't even in my notes, y'all. But did you know that I am obligated to accept that forgiveness? See, here's the problem. And we're going to get into it in a minute. But here's the big problem. Some of us have not accepted the forgiveness yet. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you haven't acknowledged your sin. And I'm not saying you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. But some of us have not accepted the forgiveness and I'm going to prove it to you. Well, when, when the devil was bringing all that stuff against me and I was feeling lower than a snake's belly, folk, listen to me. I had not yet chosen to accept the forgiveness and I didn't understand the power of God's forgiveness. Right? Look here. We must Hear me, we must forgive ourselves. You follow what I'm saying? The most ineffective Christian. Golly, man, Lord Jesus, He is speaking to me this morning. Hear me. The most, the most effective forget, uh, uh, weapon against the devil's accusations, you hear me? is us recognizing that God has forgiven us, and if God can forgive us, we ought to be able to forgive ourselves. Amen? Get a hold of that for a minute. You say, but Brother Charlie, I'm in a habitual sin. I can't get rid of it. I've tried everything. You are forgiven. You hear me? Now let me tell you something. If you're stuck in it, you're living a miserable Christian life. You understand me? Because the, con, uh, the conviction, I didn't say condemnation, I said conviction of God is always on you over that. Not out of wanting to destroy you. Out of wanting you, this is God wanting you, to live the abundant life. Does all that make sense? Folks, let me tell you something. What I just told you didn't come from me. It came from Him. From God. Look here. We must forgive ourselves. Turn over to Romans 7. Romans 7. Whoo, glory. Folk, I think I'm sweating a little bit up here. Hallelujah. <coughs> Look at this. We must forgive ourselves. Now look at this. The Apostle Paul. Everybody know the Apostle Paul, right? Greatest missionary that ever lived. I think probably next to Moses, probably the greatest example of, of leading a godly life of anybody that we know. But look what... Look what the Apostle Paul wrote about himself. Look at here. Romans 7.24. What did he say about himself? O wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? <coughs> Listen to me. He was saying... My sin is killing me. The guilt of my sin is killing me. Right? This is one of the greatest Bible guys that ever lived. Paul was amazing. Paul, was, Paul stood up to the most powerful man in the world. The Roman emperor, you know that? Stood up to him and said, Jack, you need Jesus. And then they killed him. Right? You want to talk about courage? 
You want to talk about bravery, you want to talk about being a superhero for Christ, Paul was it. But look what he's writing right here. Oh, wretched man that I am. In that moment, in that very, very moment, Paul is at the bottom. He was, he's where I was a week and a half ago. He was at the bottom. He was thinking, there's no way God could love me. You know why? Because right here, all Paul could see was his failures and he could not forgive himself for his failures even though he recognized that God had forgiven him. Right? Listen to me, people. Get a hold of it. If you haven't ever before, God has forgiven you. Accept the free gift of that forgiveness. Amen? You will be freed. We sing that song about breaking chains. Folk, that will break every chain. It really is. It really will. Now, there are people out there that are going to say this. They're going to say, okay, Brother Charlie, if I'm forgiven, God already knows what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sin all over the place. Whoa. Put the brakes on. Put the brakes on. The same Paul that said, oh, wretched man that I am, also said, should we sin more that grace may abound? Oh no. Oh no. See, what you have to understand is the Holy Spirit shows us our sin and shows us our faults so that we might get better. You understand? See, Jesus wants us to live the abundant life. Do you understand that? He didn't say, I want you to live the mediocre life. I want you to live the abundant life. Oh, you mean God wants me to have all this money and all that? No, 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 no. No. Some of the most satisfied, contented Christians I've ever met in my life live in a shack with a dirt floor. And you say, oh, no, they... I said, brother, I've been there. I've seen them. I've met them. I've hugged them around the neck. I've preached the gospel to them. You go around to Mexico with me sometime and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Amen? Listen to me. You must forgive yourself. You have to. Look at this. Romans 8. 8 1. I want you to get a hold of this. Here is why you must forgive yourself. God is the ultimate authority, correct? Amen? Y'all agree with that? Look what he says, Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right? No condemnation. What is condemnation? I'll give you the dictionary version of it. Condemnation is this. Condemning someone. A death sentence. Right? A death sentence. When they put someone to death in Huntsville, Texas, they call them the condemned. Because when the judge gives the sentence of death, they are now condemned to death. Right? But what, is, what does God Himself in His Word say? Right? He says, therefore, there is now, now meaning this moment, in the present tense, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You, 
brother and sister in Christ are set free. Say that with me. I am set free. I don't think you believe it. The next time the devil brings up your past, you remind him, I'm free, devil. That's in the past. Yes, it's true. I did all those rotten things. I sinned with the best of them, right? But you know what? I'm forgiven. And I have accepted that forgiveness from God. Therefore, I forgive myself. Do you understand what I'm saying today? Look, folks, here's how it gets down to brass tacks, as Mama used to say. If you can't forgive yourself, you can't go on. You're stuck. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are stuck. Folk, I don't want to be stuck anymore. I'm done with it. I'm going on. There's a prize to win. There is a heaven to gain. Right? There's an abundant life to live from this moment on. The past is past. I'm going to leave it back there and I'm going to go on for God. Right? <clears throat> so, what we have to do, folks, in this moment, we have to change. And you say, well, Brother Charlie, you don't understand. I'm an old man now. I'm used to living the way I am, right? I ain't going to change for nobody. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? You must change. I'm telling you right now, you must change. Or you're going to be stuck in that rut from now on. Folk, let me tell you something. I don't want to get to heaven and have God remind me of all the good things I missed out on because I was stuck in my unforgiven rut. You understand me? Forgive yourself. And when the devil brings it up, say, hey, if God can forgive me, I can forgive me. Devil, get out of here. I'm done with you. That's back there. I'm going on. Right? Look here. Romans 5. Turn back to Romans 5 and 6. Romans 5, chapter 5 and verse 6. I want you to see something. You got to get a hold of this, y'all. You got to get a hold of this. And I already alluded to it earlier, but I think we need to hear the word say it. Romans 5 and 6 says this. For while, while... That means in the middle of it. For while we were still helpless, right? We couldn't help ourselves. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, right? It doesn't say that He died for the ungodly back there. It just says that He died for the ungodly. Let me give you a little bit of Charlieology. That's the ungodly in the past, that's the ungodly in the present, and that's the ungodly in the future. Any that will receive His forgiveness, accept Him as Lord and Savior, they are forgiven. Do you understand that? Right? Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, and this is not a caveat, this is just the way it is, it's not just a head knowledge of God, it's a heart knowledge of God. It's a change. We must change. Do you understand me? I've seen a lot of people go to an altar, shed puppy dog tears, and two days later they were right back in the world. Nothing happened but an emotional experience. Do you understand me? Folk, I am so thankful. And, and this does not make me better than anybody else. All it does is make me a child of God. I am so thankful that when I finally committed my life to Christ, it was real. Now, I admit to you that there have been ups and downs, 
For 30 years, there's been ups and downs and sideways and detours and falling flat on my face and folk here lately stuck in the mud. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not stuck in the mud anymore. I'm going to shift it into four-wheel drive. We're getting out of the mud and we're going on for God. Amen? And that's what every single one of us has got to do. Folks, you've got to do it individually. We've got to do it as a corporate body, as, as, as New Vision Family Fellowship. Forget what's back there and go on. You understand me? It is so important. So important. I want to read you the whole thing. Verse 6, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. Oh, I love this. Get a hold of this. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what that tells me? That when I was in the middle of being a dirty, low-down dog, God still loved me and He still died for me. What He said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, was for then, it's for now, and it's for in the future. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something right now, and this is going to... Ooh, you're going to get mad at me, but you know what? Tomorrow, Monday, August 2nd, 2021, you're going to sin. You know that? I guarantee you you're going to sin. And you're looking at me like, huh, don't look at me. Uh uh, not me. No, 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 no. Yeah, you will. You're going to get irritated at somebody that's driving too slow in front of you. Right? Miss Carpenter's back there laughing because she knows it's true. Right? Or somebody's going to cut you off. Right? Or you're going to go into McDonald's and they're going to mess up your order for your car caramel frappe, whatever you call that thing. My wife drinks all the time. Right? And you're going to get irritated. And you may not say it out loud, but in your heart, mmm. Come on, y'all. Amen? Exactly. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, my. But listen, God already knew it. Jesus already knew it when He was hanging on the cross and He forgives you for it. Forgive yourself. You understand? Forgive yourself. Everybody bow your head and close your eyes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for today. Lord, I pray today that each and every single person within the sound of my voice here physically or out there in YouTube land, I pray, God, that today they would make the decision to be forgiven. They would make that decision to be forgiven, Lord, by you. Stop carrying around the guilt of their past. Make a decision that I'm going to put my eyes on Jesus Christ, that I'm going to accept His forgiveness, that I'm going to get out of the rut, that I'm going to go on for God, and that I'm going to make a change. And a, Lord, a, a glorious change that only You, Lord, can do. I pray, God, today that each and every one of us would open our hearts to You. Just lay it all out, bear it all out, as nasty and dirty as it may be, and just say, Lord, I accept Your forgiveness for all this mess. And from now on, I'm going to look forward and I'm going to go on. I pray, God, that we would not only do it individually, God, but that we would do it as a church body. Move on us, Lord. I, I, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would just move on us right now in this time. We need you, Lord. We need you. Will you touch hearts, Holy Spirit? 
We love you today, Lord, and we thank you for what you're going to do. Are we still on? If you're out there right now, I, I'm talking to that person that is out there seeing this on YouTube or Facebook. I, I, I just have a personal message just for you. For a long time, I carried around the garbage of the past. And, and to be totally honest with you and with God, mainly, it weighed me down. It kept me from going ahead and moving ahead. But I want to tell you something. God has done a new thing in me, and I want Him to do a new thing in you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is repent of your sins. Say, God, I, I, I just... Lord, I pray you forgive me of my sin. Past, present, future. And Lord, I pray, God, that you will cleanse my heart. Give me a new heart that loves you and wants to serve you. All you have to do is ask. And I promise you, He will come into your heart and save your soul and you'll be a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm just going to pray a prayer. I know for a lot of us it's, it's hard to pray, but I'm going to pray. But I'm going to ask you that hear me right now that are in the sound of my voice. I'm going to ask you, just wherever you are right now, if you're in a car, if you're, if you're driving, if you're in the living room, wherever you're at, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to just bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm... I'm messed up. I've got a ton of problems. But Lord, I believe that your word says that if I'll ask, you'll forgive me. And Lord, right now, I pray, God, that you'd forgive me. And Lord, that you would give me a new heart and make me a new creature in you. Lord, I accept your forgiveness right now. I, I totally accept it. I, I know that I'm forgiven by you, and I accept that. And Lord, I love you and I want to serve you for the rest of my days. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life and for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put my personal phone number up. And I'm going to ask you to call me. And I want to talk to you about the decision that you've made. And I want to talk to you about following Christ and believers' baptism. I'm not going to push you towards a particular church, a particular denomination. None of that matters. I'm not going to ask you to follow a bunch of rules because frankly, it's not about rules. It's about a relationship between you and Jesus Christ. That's all that matters. So you call me right now. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank everyone that listens in today. And I pray God's blessings over you. Thank you. God bless you.